Paul D. Good morning to you. It is Shark Week 1 and Week 3 in the NFL. Let's start with the 49ers who did get upset in L.A. at SoFi Stadium. Let's start with the positives. And the positive, I think, Jawan Jennings and Brock Purdy. They wanted to see, you know, what would Brock Purdy look like without, you know, without Kittle and without Debo and, you know, without McCaffrey. And he was phenomenal. It was the best offensive day. They put up 425 yards of offense. People talk about the Ronnie Bell drop. It's a great throw. The Rams players didn't drop those 50-yard balls. When Stafford had to make those type of plays, they caught him. Brock was unbelievable. I mean, he saw the field. He scrambled. He moved. He had him in position to... To win that game, I remember years ago talking to Jimmy G about uh, Jawan Jennings. I'm like, what does he do? What's he do well? Like when he was just young and starting, he goes, right. well, he's not fast. He's not too quick. But like he he gets open. He knows how to get open. And boy, did he know how to get open the <laughs> other day. Like he was just a dominant, fierce dog out there all game long. The Jennings thing is interesting to me because if you can run, great. It's a plus. But, like, there's something about, especially this offense, there's something about his physical makeup in contrast to the other players they have that I just think is is a missing ingredient. And I, I feel like they don't incorporate him enough week in, week out, Jawan Jennings. I mean, it, was, it looked like Michael Jordan just climbing. I mean, his hang time, he just draped himself over the safety right there to make that catch. He's always been dependable, but he always seemed like he was that third option or fourth fourth option, which everybody needs. But maybe, like, you know, you can't watch that game and go, maybe they paid the wrong guy. You know, maybe mm. maybe that's the guy they should have paid. Maybe that's the guy that, um, you know, should be their go-to guy, just the way that he performed. So what's going on with Brendan Ayuk since you alluded to it, and they did pay Brendan Ayuk. Did they pay the wrong guy, Baldy? Well, you know, last year, he averages 17 yards a catch, and he has seven touchdowns. He looks pedestrian, and he's playing like he's pedestrian. He just doesn't seem like the same person. He doesn't have any sort of swag about him at all right now. He just seems like a guy out there. Now, is that training camp? It, probably. It probably is a big chunk of it. No offseason, no training camp, no preseason. And then just go and hit the ground running. Find that rhythm back into this offense right now because he, he's not really heavily involved right now. And he doesn't... He doesn't play like he should be. Is it a byproduct of him not getting open enough? The quarterback not looking at him? The coach not dialing his number up? W what are you seeing? Nah, I see a little bit of all of that right there, Joe. I mean, I can't pinpoint it. I don't think the 49ers can pinpoint it. I don't think IU can. The quarterback's going to throw it to the open receiver. That's just his job, and that's just how good he is. Uh, he's not going to go out, and just the way Stafford did, if it's throwing it to Jordan, Jordan Winningham in the sixth-round pick, he's going to throw it to him. He's going to throw it to the open guy. And, you know, whoever wins. And the progression will take you through it. Could he have thrown it, you know, to somebody? Could he have thrown it to Ayuk on the throw that he made to Ronnie Bell? Right. He could have. Safety was in the middle of the field. He looked like he had his mind made up because it looked like Ronnie Bell got, you know, won a little earlier. You can't see both. You can't see the right sideline and the left sideline. you got to see one or the other. But he, he made a decision to throw it to Ronnie Bell. It was the right throw. It was a perfect throw. I mean, receiver's got to catch it right now. I mean, we've seen... A lot of drops so far. We saw Ayuk drop one against the Jets in the end zone to start the season. We've seen a lot of drops from this receiving core right now. Defensively, Baldy, it's a problem. It's a problem. I mean, look, Javon Hargrave, the, the long bomb to, to Tutu Atwell. Like, you know, he, I don't know if it's tricep, you know, I mean, it's a muscle injury tear. Like, I, I don't know what his status is. But he, he has not been good. Leonard Floyd has not been, he's been pretty invisible. Nick makes some plays, but not enough. I mean, they don't have depth. And they don't have playmakers up front. That's what this defense is built upon. And so a guy like Stafford, you know, playing with the rookie center and a first-year left guard and a left tackle that missed all of preseason, like they hold up just fine. And Stafford did down 14 nothing. They just kept firing. Uh, but the big thing was the run game. I mean, Kyron Williams, it was under 100 yards, but still, Fred was invisible. I mean, I didn't see anybody make a play on Sunday on that defense. I didn't see anybody that looked like they wanted to make a play. You know, like somebody that just... Just the way Fred did the week before, where he's just knocking the ball out and getting his hands up. I didn't see anybody do anything on Sunday with that defense. The defensive tackles have been invisible in this defense all year long for the most part. I mean, Hargrave had a sack last week, but, I mean, for the most part, they've been pretty invisible. And 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 they've been able to get blocked, blocked up front. Uh, you just don't see – and you just don't see enough scheme things to, like, make up for any of that right now. What's going on with Bosa? I don't see him shedding blocks and, and stopping the run. I, I'm very frustrated with him because I know he's a better player than what he's shown this year. Well, I mean, he hasn't, he hasn't done much. I mean, you know, if Nick was on this call with us right now, he'd tell you he has to do more. He'd be honest with himself. Going up against guys that you should win against, you know. I mean, Lark Jackson is a guy that, you know, he should – he's he's paid and he's a former defensive player of the year. You want to win in those one-on-one -on -one battles. Now, I'll give – 
I'll give Sean McVay credit. You know, their offense line coach. I mean, they doubled them. They knew exactly who to double on every protection when they wanted to go deep. They chipped them. They slid to them. I mean, he wasn't getting easy one-on-one rushes. Special teams, special teams, mm. special teams have been anything but special the last two weeks for the San Francisco 49ers. Last week, the block punt Minnesota. This week, they're controlling the game, Baldy. 14 nothing. I'm going to the bathroom saying, hey, man, they're going to roll. And fourth and six, they do the direct snap to Ronnie Rivers. That will lose you games at a heartbeat in the NFL, Baldy. No doubt. No question. Third of the game. And here's the thing. At the end of the year, at the end of 17 games, you want to win two games because of your special teams. You definitely don't want to lose a game or two games because of your special teams. You saw last night, you know, uh, you know, you saw Austin Eckler take a kickoff return to start the third quarter, mm-hmm. 60-something yards. Five plays later, they're in the end zone. They're just rolling on, on Cincinnati. I mean, special teams changes field position, changes the game. Block punts, missed field goals. It gives you good field position on that missed field goal right there. Like, all those things add up. And field position, especially when you're, Playing a you know when you're playing a division game like this, um, you know it's it's the difference between winning and losing. Yep. What do you or think about Jordan won. Mason? <laughs> what, what do you think about Jordan Mason like right now? Well, I mean, look, Jordan Mason. I mean, not counting the uh, the holds and the plays that have been called back, and the, the the juice hold on the outside was a killer in that game. Yep. And you know, he I don't know the last time Juice got a penalty. Period. Like I just don't even know. But I mean, he's got seventy touches now, Joe, in three games. <laughs> Like, you know, you're on pace right now for 300. He's never done this before. Like, no, I don't know if he can hold up the way they're going. They're, you know, you, you need Debo back. I don't think you could pound Jordan Mason because of the way that he runs. Like, he finishes his runs. He finishes hard, which is great. You want that. I don't know that he can handle 70 more touches the next three weeks without wearing down. You look at his total yards right now. You look at his yards per carry. Since that jet game, it has decreasingly gone down. Yep. Um, and so that's not that's not a great sign right now. No, I'm with I you. I mean, We're, to me, now look, I, I, it, it's a it's a three game trend. Um, I'm just saying that's a lot of touches for somebody that's never had to do that before. Real quick, looking ahead to the Patriots, they got smoked by the New York Jets on Thursday Night Football. But I look at the first two games they played Seattle very tough, lost in overtime. They beat Cincinnati in Cincinnati to start the season. And they run the football, which has been the Niners' kryptonite. They can't stop the run right now. And I think they're a solid defense. I know they didn't, the Jets had their way, but this is not a game I think the 49ers can overlook. Well, they had 10 days to get ready. Um, they have a, a real specific formula. They should have beaten Seattle. They lost in overtime. Uh, they, 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 beat, they physically beat Cincinnati. Um, they 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 have to be able to run the ball, and they got to keep the score close. If they fall behind fourteen um, nothing, it might be over, like it did against the Jets. If they keep it close and they can play their style of football, which is you know Antonio Gibson, Ramondre Stevenson running it, they have enough skill at wide receiver that can hurt you. Uh, Jacoby Brissett has never been a turnover machine, and defensively they're very talented. Keon White is a really good player. They've got good players defensively. Um, you know, but if Brock goes out there and carves them up the way he did the Rams, I, I like they should be able to put this game away. But uh, if they keep it close and they play their style of football, uh, they could get this thing into the fourth quarter. And that's, that's what, how they're built. That's what they want to be able to do. 